Good afternoon, welcome to our homestead. We are doing some winterizing today and some overwintering of plants in our greenhouse and we're gonna show you what they are and how to do it. Let's go. Welcome inside the greenhouse. We still have a lot growing in here. We've got some winter vegetables, of course. We've got our carrots, we've got some cabbages, some broccoli, and Swiss chard. But we also have some summer vegetables that are still growing and still producing. Although, they are right at the end of their production cycle. So I am going to overwinter them today because we are in for a cold spell, and that's gonna drop the temperature in here to below freezing, and even with our heater, it's good to put those summer vegetables, those perennials actually, to bed. Now the ones that I am talking about are peppers and eggplants. Yes, both of them are in the same family, and they are a little bit more hardy and will overwinter better than tomatoes. So I always start tomatoes new and fresh in the spring, and I still do have tomatoes in here. I'm gonna let them go as long as I possibly can. but. The eggplants and peppers take a long time to germinate in the spring. They take a long time to grow and start producing. So if you can help yourself out every spring and have a pepper plant or an eggplant that is ready to produce right when the temperatures get warm, that's a huge advantage. Pepper plants are not that strong of a plant and they break quite easily. As you can see, this one right here has gotten pretty tall. We didn't give it any support and many of the branches broke off. Additionally, the pepper production has slowed way down. There's still flowers on many of the plants, but the actual formation of the peppers is just almost stopped. So it's time for us to put these to bed. I did a video in the past on overwintering pepper plants, but that was from out in the garden. I transplanted those and brought those into my house. This is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to leave these in the greenhouse, and we're gonna show you how to cover them up and kind of put them to bed even though it's warm in here. Now they still might try to leaf out, so just keep an eye on that in the winter time. It's the same story with our eggplants. They're producing flowers, but no fruit. So it's time to put them to bed as well. And we're gonna do it the same way. And the very last thing are our Moringa trees or Malungi, and they've already started to go dormant themselves, but we wanna trim these back and I will show you how to do that. We're also gonna wrap them to keep them warm because they are a tropical plant. Okay, friends, these peppers are really easy and as you can see, this one's kind of self pruning. It's already broken off because they are quite weak. We're gonna take all of these branches here and we're gonna prune them down to one node above where they branch off the main trunk. So for this one in particular, we're gonna take off this little piece that are already broken off here. We're gonna take off that branch right there. We're leaving this one node. As you can see where the main trunk is, this one splits off this way and splits into two. And we're gonna take off both of those right above that node. And then the last one here has the node right there and we're gonna clip off just above it. And this is what you are going to be left with for your pepper plant. Don't worry, you are not going to hurt the plant by pruning it like this. All of the energy is down below in that root system and that's what we need to protect during the winter. Even though the plant is dormant, we do need to keep that soil surface warm. And it really helps that we are here in the greenhouse. If your plants are outside in the garden, I recommend watching our other video linked at the top of the screen, which shows you how to transplant them into pots and bring them inside your house for the winter. Just remember to get off every last piece of foliage so the plant has an easier time going into dormancy. And then of course, harvest the rest of your peppers. Now that we have everything pruned back, I'm going to protect it with some row cover. And depending on where you're at, you may need to double this up or triple it up. It depends on how warm or cold your greenhouse is, what your heating system is, so on and so forth. Use your best judgment. Since this is a long one that I've used in the garden before, I'm just gonna layer it as many times as I can. Row covers like that are extremely beneficial for any gardener to have. Click on this video right here, which explains it all. Now let's get to the eggplant. Now for the eggplant, it's something special. Just kidding, 
we're gonna do it the exact same way. We're gonna start trimming everything back to almost the central trunk. Now this eggplant has a much shorter central trunk. So it's got three secondary trunks that come up here. We're gonna to trim to those because that primary trunk is so short, but we're gonna do it the same way. Any branch coming off just a little bit above, we're gonna to trim to one node, just like that. And we're gonna leave it just like this, just like the pepper plant. This one has a very strong and tall main trunk, but it does have this little branch here at the bottom. I'm gonna trim that back to one node as well because it's a really thick and viable branch. And like I mentioned with the peppers, if there's any leaves like this coming off the main trunk, just pick them off. Everything's pruned down, now time for the row cover. If you don't live in a temperate climate like I do and you are in an extremely cold climate, even if you have a greenhouse, you might wanna use a different material to lay over your peppers and eggplants. But be careful because they will just start producing leaves again. So I will also periodically check underneath the row covers to see if they have gone dormant or if they need a little bit more pruning and those new leaf starts pulled off of them. Remember, I'm in zone 8B in Texas, so you may have to modify things just a little bit per your zone. Now let's get to this Moringa. So instead of these nice little pruners, what you are going to need is a pruning saw. And then I'm going to cover these with something a little bit different since they are a fully tropical plant, and that is burlap. This saw is my favorite. It's made by a company called Silky. It's Japanese, and it is razor sharp years after buying it. If you're interested in this or these amazing Felco pruners or the burlap, or the row cover, I'm going to have links for all of those below the video. So check down below in the description. Friends, this one is super simple. All we are going to do is cut this off at about three feet in height. You can see how delicate that was and how easily that saw just came right through it. Now, if you've got one that's three feet in height like this and it still has some branches on it, all you're gonna do is trim them off. And then of course, if you've got any Moringa leaves left, then you certainly wanna save those because they're super high in vitamin C and that's really important in the winter time. This one I'm gonna take off with the pruning saw, it's just easier. You can see how razor sharp this pruning saw is. On this one, I'm gonna come just above this branch. We're gonna cut this branch off so that we've got something to start with in the springtime. If you didn't see our earlier video on the benefits of this Moringa tree, you need to click on the link at the top of the screen because it is chock full of super important information about this miracle plant. What we're gonna do is wrap around all of these. And since they are growing so close together, I can just use one wrap around them. That's gonna add another benefit to this is that it's gonna trap some air inside, which will stay a little bit warmer, which is nice. Now this is the same burlap I use every year to wrap my fig trees. Depending on where you live, your figs may or may not need to be wrapped. If you're interested in that video, also click on the link at the top of the screen. Now, since these are tropical, you may need to give them several wraps or several layers. This is about four layers thick, and I think I'm going to add one more. And that'll ensure that my Moringa make it through to the spring. Since we are in here in the greenhouse, we don't have to worry about the wind blowing this off. So if you just want to drape it over it, that's perfectly fine. Friends, I hope those tips were helpful for you in your greenhouse gardening for winter. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them for me in the comments section below the video. Now go check out these videos right here, which is our full playlist on how we built this greenhouse by ourselves. Have a beautiful, blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.